a year ago, I said this. So my goal is to hit $25,000 and get monthly dividend payments of $50 a month. So in order to do that, obviously I got some work to do. I'm excited to say that I not only met that goal, but I've actually exceeded it by quite an amount. And I'm gonna share it with you in today's video. Now, a lot of my subscribers, my awesome subscribers, I can't believe, by the way, that we're almost at 50,000 subscribers here on the channel. You guys have been asking me, hey, what's my dividend update? And what's really cool about this is that video that I shared with you on the day that I'm recording this video right here, exactly one year ago to the day is when I set that goal. I want a $25,000 portfolio. I want $50 a month in dividends. I beat that goal and I'm going to share with you exactly how I did it. Now, there is a free website you can use to track your dividends and that's literally what it's called, trackyourdividends.com. So hop over to that, sign up for that, and let me share with you what my portfolio looks like right now today. Here you go, $56,411. That's what I got going on here in my taxable brokerage account. And what I really am excited about before we get to the dividends is this right little, this little tiny number right here. That indicates growth, $4,078 of growth in the last year-ish or whatever, you know. Um, I, you know, obviously every month counts, every day counts in the stock market, but, and really guys, there's no secret to this. I'm not ultra rich or anything like that. This is just cutting down my expenses, living extremely frugally, trying to basically profit as much as I can, which means my income that I bring in from my side hustles, as well as from my job income, I try to not let a lot of that money go out to stupid things. I try to cut down my bills as much as possible. That way I can take this money and apply it into the stock market and make more money with my money. So that's what the sweet life is all about. So let's look at the dividend though. So right now on my entire portfolio, the dividend yield is 4.47%. Not too bad considering I have a lot of growth potential in this, which basically means I have a lot of ETFs, I have a lot of stocks that are primarily focused more on growth than they are on dividend payouts. So no, you're not gonna see a 12% dividend yield. And in fact, I would say that's a little bit too high based on an entire portfolio of what I'm growing on. But that's what I got going on now. And then look at my annual income based on that percentage, based on my total portfolio at 2,521. What's that? Uh, roughly about $200 a month which means I also beat that $50 per month goal that I set for myself a year ago. So I thought in this video it'd be kind of cool because it's been a while since I just kind of talked off script and just kind of let you guys know how to do something like this. If you want to be like, how do I get to that point? I want to continue to grow my dividend portfolio. I still want to continue to grow that awesome growth of $4,000 or more. What do I do? What's my first step? It's actually a three part step that I would recommend. The very first thing before you do anything here, because what you're looking at is a bunch of taxable brokerage accounts. Now you guys know that I have a lot of different accounts. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, I got Robinhood, I got Weeble, I got Public, I got Schwab, I got all these different brokerage accounts because I like to review them. I don't just review things I don't use. So I'm using all these things at the same time. So what you're looking at here is a summary, 56,000 is split between all these different brokerages that I use. But before you start dabbling in that stuff, the very first thing you wanna do is make sure you're taking advantage of your job. What does that mean? Well, that means get your 401k or your 403b or whatever your company offers as a match. So if you're sitting here right now and you're not investing in a 401k and your company offers that with a match, what's happening is this. Your company is saying, We'd like to give you one to 5% extra money if you invest into a 401k. And what you're doing is you're saying, no, I don't need the money. I don't need that money. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not going to invest in it. They're, it's like they're trying to give you a raise. They're trying to give you money and you're saying no. So first thing you need to do right now is hop over to your 401k, get with your job, figure out what your match is. Hopefully you have an awesome match, one, three, five. If it's more than five, even better percentage, which means dollar for dollar, they'll match your money based on a certain percentage. And then move on to what we love as the Roth IRA. Now you can get this in any type of an account. You can get it in Webull, you can get it in Schwab, you can get it in Fidelity, it doesn't matter where you go, but look for Roth IRA. And then what you wanna do is max that out. Right now in 2021, you can put up to $6,000, depending on your income, into a Roth IRA. Now what's beautiful about that is let's say your paycheck gives you some money, which hopefully your paycheck is giving you some money every single week or bi-weekly or whatever you get paid. Well, that money is after tax. You've already paid taxes out of the paycheck and there you go, you got your money. Well, you can then invest that money into a Roth IRA. And because you're doing that after tax, from the rest of forever, until you get to the point where you need that money, it grows tax free. 
which means once you're old and living your life and living your sweet life, maybe taking some cruises, living out on the beach, drinking some beer, whatever you're doing, <laughs> you can then withdraw that money out of the Roth IRA without paying taxes in the future. That's what's so awesome about the Roth IRA. So make sure you're doing that. Take advantage of that. $6,000 a year, that should be like, boom. So 401k first, get the match, get your job raised. Two, get that Roth IRA. And then three, start going crazy on your taxable brokerage accounts. Now, a lot of people say, well, why don't I also max out my 401k at that point if I got some extra money? And that's perfectly fine. What that would look like is this. Of course, you do your 401k, then you do the $6,000 per year in Roth, and then you max out your 401k, which means you can put up to $19,500 per year into your 401k. And that's perfectly fine. That means you're stashing away a ton of money in retirement, and there's never anything wrong with that. That's a very smart idea. Then after that, you can then jump into this taxable brokerage account. And what's nice about this is let's say you're only 18 years old or 20 years old. Hey, even if you're 30, 40 years old, you start going crazy on maxing out your retirement, but then also going on to this and investing all of your money into your taxable brokerage accounts. You could then build up a certain amount of money to where you could actually retire early. And, so, and there's actually a, a phrase for it. It's called financial independence, retire early, which means you have a certain amount of money that you could eventually drift on your money and only live off of your investments. How cool is that? So what you would do is you live off of your taxable brokerage accounts until you reach the age that you're allowed to tap into your retirement funds, which is typically 59 and a half. So let's say you could retire at the age of 35, coast, 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 coast. Oh, here comes 59 and a half. Now I have this other bucket of money that I've been saving up. You're living the life. So that's kind of the goal of the FIRE community, but that's what I would recommend. Before you start dipping into this dividend portfolio and this brokerage account, make sure you're taking advantage of your retirement accounts. What I have here specifically in the uh, brokerage account, by the way, if you wanna see my retirement stuff, tap the like and leave me a comment that says, I don't know, retirement. <laughs> That's pretty easy, right? Just drop a line and, and I'll maybe share that with you guys as well, but only talking about taxable brokerage accounts right now. So what really helped, I think with this $4,000 increase comes from my Schwab account. So in my Schwab account, I own some positions of cruise lines. Now that is unfortunately all based on timing. Timing's a very dangerous game, but I'll tell you what happened. During the pandemic, March, 2020 comes along, everything shuts down and you know me, if you know me, I love taking cruises and I was dying because I'm like, oh my gosh, they're shutting down cruises. Everything's going to hell. And not only that, that stock went down significantly. I mean, we're talking the big boys like Royal Caribbean and things like that, they started dropping significantly. So I started buying shares and then the stock dropped even more. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I've lost money. So I'm going to buy even more. You know, you buy on the dip. You always buy on the dip. If you trust and believe in the company, which I did, I'm like, I need to go in. They're going to bounce back. Eventually this pandemic will end. Uh, I'm, I'm still sitting here waiting for it to end. But regardless of that, you know, I'm, I'm going all in on this. And that as of today has grown significantly. Look at the percentages here, guys. This is based on the Carnival and Royal Caribbean growth. And it's not a whole lot invested, but uh, look at that. You know, you invest a little bit and it grows to that amount. That's just really taking advantage of the time. Be greedy when people are fearful. Warren Buffett says it, it's so freaking true. That's what helped with a lot of this growth. Now, a lot of my dividends come from your dividend paying stocks. So let's talk about them. I have, of course, Apple and things like that, whatever. Apple pays a little bit small. You know, Apple, those type of growth companies aren't gonna pay a lot because they need to reinvest their money, their profit into building more exciting products. But let's talk about some good ones. I have some Nusi. I've talked about Nusi on the channel. Look at that. I have 334 shares of Nusi. That thing's piling it in at a 7.82% dividend yield, giving me $748 a year. And then you got QYLD going crazy on them at 450 shares. That's what's bringing in that. So I got $1,000 coming in there with such a high dividend yield. Um, there's my Royal Caribbean, fine. I got some RYLD, which is basically like QYLD, only it invests and focuses on the Russell 2000 index instead of the NASDAQ 100. Look at that. We got an 11.94% dividend yield. SCHD, that's your trusty ETF. The dividend ETF by Schwab, that's at a 2.78. Not as exciting as the other ones, but again, we're talking a whole different scheme when it comes down to QYLD and the uh, covered call group versus this is an actual dividend equity ETF. Um, let's see, I got some, uh, you know, some large cap ETFs. I got AT&T. You guys are still busting on me for AT&T, but I'm going to keep it just because, you know, I just want to see what happens. Uh, if you're not aware, they, they got 
got rid of the HBO and Warner Media Group, but um, they also cut their dividend. So it, it's really a bad time for AT&T, but right now it's still sitting at a 7.6% dividend yield. I'm gonna hang on to them and see what happens. I only got 14 shares, nothing to get excited about there. And then I got my VTI. Now this is in my taxable account. I have a lot of VTI, a lot of VTSAX in my retirement accounts, but got 65 shares sitting here so I can retire early. I've got a long way to go, but that also pays me a slight little 1.16% uh, dividend yield. So. That's kind of what I got going on. Guys, remember, I'm just some dude on YouTube that sometimes looks like Woody from Toy Story. Never take this as personal finance advice. I do not know your personal finance situation, so I cannot give financial advice. Don't just copy my picks. That is something that uh, rookies do. You don't want to do that because a lot of times I move very quickly and I'm doing different things and you don't want to follow me and, and uh, miss the boat. So don't, don't do stuff like that. What I'd like you to do is if any of these inspire you to say, hey, that sounds like a cool idea. Do your own research. I have I have 10 steps to analyze a stock as well as uh, smart steps to analyze an ETF. Check out those videos after we're done with this one and then you can learn how to do it on your own. I wanna give you the tools to do your own research so you can be the superstar and be your own financial advisor. So what's my goal? Well, my goal is I wanna to continue to really grow my growth portfolio. So I am gonna still keep going very bullish on the VTIs, the VUG, the VOO, those type of things because I wanna really focus on that overall growth because you know, typically I don't need to rely so much on dividend income. Now I still want dividends because I love the dividend reinvestments. Those are super cool and super important. So I will still do that. But in the, in the meantime, I still want to also focus a lot on the VTI. There's something else I didn't share with you guys today. And that is what's going on with the mortgage payoff. We are going crazy on mortgage payoff. And, and honestly, it's a blessing guys. I mean, YouTube is treating us well. Uh, my business is treating us well, as well as my full-time job. I got like 15 full-time jobs. It's killing me right now. I'm dying. I'm going absolutely insane. But outside of that, I got to say that because of this blessing, we've been able to really slam our mortgage down. We are hoping to pay off the mortgage at the worst December of next year. So December 2022, mortgage will be paid off. And, and a lot of people don't like that idea. They say, hey, it's smarter to invest it in the stock market. And I do agree because I have a very low interest rate on my mortgage. But what I don't like is I don't like risk. I don't like that. Let's say all of this goes away. All of a sudden YouTube shuts down. My job lays me off and all hell breaks loose all at the same time. I don't want to have a $1,600 mortgage payment, or even if it's more than that, if you guys have a higher mortgage payment, you don't want that kind of clouding over your life and risking foreclosure. That's what I don't like. I am really, I, I'm not a big fan of risk. So call me that guy. I don't like risk. And what, what I'd love to do is be able to completely eliminate the mortgage, which allows me to then be more risky with my investments and then be more risky with my job ideas and be more risky with business ventures because I don't have a personal matter weighing me down, which means that if something does hit the fan, YouTube shuts down, something happens, and I have a sudden dramatic loss of income, we're still chilling. I could go get like a job at Starbucks being a barista. Uh, who knows how much they make, but it's probably not as much as I'm making here. So, but I could do that and still float on and still live well without having to tap into my already built up investments. You get what I'm saying? So beyond just type in retirement, what I'd like to know is we're about to hit 50,000 subscribers. What do you want to see next for this next chapter of the YouTube channel? I want to build up to 100,000 subscribers. That's the goal. Uh, what do you guys want to see next? Comment down below. Whatever it is, I, I want to hear about it. Obviously, personal finance related. That's what this channel is about. What do you want me to focus on? What do you want me to help you with? What's going on? Do you want career advice? What is it? Comment down below. And I want to thank you again for watching these videos. Here's another video that might be helpful. And here's a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.